Welcome, Sydney. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. The queen of books. <laughs> the queen of fashion. Thank you. Oh. Um, okay. Aim High, your new book. Please tell listeners what this book is about and what inspired you to write this book. Well, I host a lot of fashion segments for shows like the Today Show, E! Inside Edition. And once my segments ended, I would get hundreds of DMs on Instagram from women of all ages, ranging from teenagers to women in their 60s, saying that they needed more. They wanted more fashion advice and they wanted to know about confidence. They had all of these questions that they couldn't get answered in my six minute segment. So that was kind of where the idea came from. How can I expand on what people already know of me in a place that you can constantly go back to and just learn more. And so Aim High is really that place. And it's a go-to read for motivational advice on fashion tips, but also how to bring out your confidence from within. Because I always say that confidence is an accessory that never goes out of style. And it's just as difficult of something to bring out as much as developing your own personal style. Those two things really come together. And it's also to sort of explain how the way that you dress can affect your mood and it helps you achieve the goals that you want out of life. I know for myself throughout quarantine, I was living in sweatpants. At the beginning, I was very unmotivated. I was very depressed by everything going on in the world. And then I realized, wait a minute, if I want to shift my views and my mindset, I need to start dressing like the girl I used to be. So now I put on my makeup. I put on structured pants. I wear a fitted top. I am like the original me. And so this whole notion of aiming high is something I think that's even more relevant today because of the pandemic. We all need that positivity and just that emphasis on self-care and that goes right down to what we wear. I am totally impressed that you're dressing up in your home every day. That's amazing. I love it. And it's inspirational and I need to take a piece of that. I have these three sweatpants that actually I learned about from Real Simple Magazine and they did like a inventory of like the best joggers. And I was like, ooh, I'm kind of tired of my sweatpants. So I I ordered those sweatpants and I like every day I'm like light gray, dark gray, black, light gray. Dark. <laughs> they're comfortable. Like I get it. If you could see on the side of our Zoom screen right now, I have like six pairs of sweatpants that are just sitting on the side. But I say those are for after hours. That's what I can change into once I'm done with the work that needs to be done. That's, That's just my own way. No, no, I do dress up sometimes. Um I, you know, sometimes because it does make me feel good. It's absolutely true. And when you feel better, you even eat better. And it's like this whole like ripple effect. Um, but I, yes, I totally understand. Um, and I loved how in the book, you gave a whole example at the beginning when you were trying to help a woman dress for three weddings in like a week. And you ended up finding this like magic item I'd never heard of before that like morphs into 57 different things. And yeah. you could see her confidence really coming out and how like she really owned that outfit and the accessories that you found. And you were must, you were like the best shopper ever. I need you to like, <laughs> figure out I don't, you like don't spend that much money you get a hundred different things you make all these different outfits and then the end result of course is this super confident person who can like waltz into the wedding feeling really great so I thought that was such a great sort of opening story that you uh included thank you yeah that was definitely I would say one of the most memorable moments of the last few years it was my first I would say like real creative segment on Hoda and Jenna where I got to really sort of create a concept and have someone, a viewer, be changing on live television as we went. Like we had a little mini dressing room for her with a curtain. She like ran back and forth. The dress, which was called the convertible wrap dress, was being wrapped around like a million different ways. I mean, it was a whole situation. But this woman, Eileen, was just like so excited. And that was the moment that I realized too, it doesn't matter where you live in the country. We live in New York, so we're surrounded by fashion constantly. This was a woman who lived in a very suburban town outside of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania where it just wasn't part of her life. She didn't even care. But this is a moment where she realized, wait a minute, there is something to be said here. I actually do like fashion. It just took me a moment to figure it out. And I think it happens for every woman at a different point in life. And tell me again the story, and you included it in your book, of your complete like go getterness from your Harvard summer program to launching a blog to becoming you, um, working all through college. I mean, this is like insane. So just give us a little more color into all of that. 
Well, I think a lot of moms will relate to this when you have a child who maybe is super shy, is maybe afraid of going to summer camp or doing sort of like the traditional things that all of the kids on, you know, the Upper East Side or even other states are doing. I was just never that girl to leave my family and go away, even on a sleepover. I was just very attached to my mom and probably still am a little bit. Um, so they, my parents were like, Cindy, do you want to go to a college that's outside of New York? What are, how are they going to think that you're ready for that, these schools? They know that you haven't done anything that's outside of, you know, your sort of box. And I said, you're right. And my mom brought up the idea of Harvard Summer School and my aunts had gone. And this is like years ago with a big age gap between us. But she told me that she had this amazing experience. And I was like, well, if she did it and she's a homebody, then I could get into it. So I applied and got in. And when I went to go and uh, select the courses that were available to me, the two that really sounded just the most appealing and for no other reason, just than the descriptions were in journalism. And so I signed up for these two classes with all Harvard professors. I was like the youngest person in my classes because for some reason it was more targeted towards grad students, but they let me in and I was you know, just 16. And for the first assignment for one of the classes, they said, you need to come back in the next day and start your own blog, write about whatever you want. This is in 2010, so Instagram is non-existent. The word WordPress is this new term that people are just trying to figure out what that even means and what you can do with it. And my dorm room was coincidentally the dorm room that Mark Zuckerberg was in, Lowell oh. House, <laughs> yeah, years ago. I create this blog and I'm like, you know what? If I'm gonna write about something, it needs to be what I know. And I had a very stylish mom. I, I had a very stylish grandmother. I can write about fashion. So I come up with the name Style Solutions and I start posting my outfits like you see of traditional fashion bloggers today. It was becoming wildly read across this summer program for whatever reason. And when I got back to New York, I was like, I don't want to give this up. I could totally see this becoming a brand. And I said, but it needs to be different. I can't just be posting my outfits. It doesn't have enough depth for me. So in addition to just the digital skills I learned at this program, I said I wanted to really take the reporting skills that I learned in the other class that I was taking that summer. And I said, I want to start interviewing celebrities. So at 16 years old, you don't really know how you're going to make that happen. But conveniently, the New York Post has always these great little stories and advertisements. And there was an ad uh, for Rihanna, who's going to be launching her debut book at Barnes and Noble, which is like ironic. And, you know, the life is so funny like that. It all comes around. And I got my school to let me to leave class early. I changed in the middle of Fifth Avenue and 43rd Street out of my little uniform, put on whatever clothes I had. And I waited in this line for three hours as the last person. I swore Rihanna was gonna leave. I was just begging like the team I saw around, I'm like, is she gonna stay, is she gonna stay? She stayed. I got up to her and I said, um, you know, instead of just signing my book with my, your name, can you please write down your favorite uh, fashion accessory? I didn't know if she was gonna do it. I couldn't see, there was so much room between me and her at the table. And I have the book here, so I look at it sometimes. She wrote it down. She said it was uh, scarves. And so I was able to turn that quote into an article and say, Rihanna reveals her favorite fashion accessory and then like recapped her best moments in scarves. The article blows up. It gets like 10,000 unique people in that first I hour. It, I thought it was hair accessories. I could have sworn you said something else. Wasn't it, it hair accessories? Now oh, I have scarves. It, it, it had two it was, words. There were definitely two words in it. Maybe... Well, maybe they, your book. Right? It could have been changed to hair accessories because she used the scarves as like turbans across oh, her hair. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so it was a combination, but she really meant scarves is what she meant. We wrote that in the book, but I, I think it was more leaning towards scarves because she always wore them across her Got head. It. Okay. But whatever. Sorry. So anyway. this book. Sorry. <laughs> good detail, good catch of detail, but she wrote this down. And so the article blew up and that was the moment where I was like, if I can get Rihanna to talk about something, then I should be able to ask many more celebrities and from there, I got an internship at the Daily Front Row, went to GW for college in School of Media Public Affairs, freelanced for them throughout college, and uh, interned for Rachel Zoe, Oprah Magazine, like always just kept my feet wet. And um, I became an editor as soon as I graduated for the Daily until I left two years later to pursue being on air. So it's been a like a 10 year sort of journey. And uh, people are like, you're so young, you're so young. I feel old because it's been going on for so many years, you know? Yeah. Um, so is that like your, your dream, the, uh, like the on-air component of your life? Like, do you want to have your own show? It sounds like, it sounds like that's where this is going. That like one day you're going to have your own fashion show on Bravo or something. Is that what you're, where you're headed? Yeah, definitely. And you know what? Like fashion has been my core. It's been the base of what I've done, but because of it, and then what I've also been doing other things throughout quarantine, like 
it's opened the conversation to talk so much more about fashion. And I love fashion as like an, a way to get into someone and to sort of just talk about fun things. But I'm really interested in expanding that and really having conversations just beyond fashion too, but how to mold these, you know, different categories together. Very cool. But a show, yes. A show, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now it's so sure. great though, because it's like you can just turn on your camera and you have a show. I mean, it, you know what I mean? Like it's so just intermediated, if that's even the right word, but I feel like and you don't need, do. right? You don't even need the network. Is, I mean, it's better, right? Because you get a bigger audience right away, but you can test it out, right? But that's what I've been actually doing um, throughout quarantine. I started a daily Instagram live show and we bring on different celebrities and designers every day. And sometimes I think the views are so crazy that it might be just as much as what people are watching on television. And media is changing so much. I think people really want that accessibility and there's something cool. And like you do your Instagram lives too, that like your fans and audience can ask questions as they go and they feel like engaged and involved. And I think we all want to feel less alone right now. And that whole notion of community is so important. Totally. You're right. Um, and of course you have your Instagram live show. I'm sorry. I should have thought. No, <laughs> um, okay. Let's go back to the fashion specifics for like two seconds to the aforementioned moms who are in their sweatpants, perhaps me most of the time. What do you, what do you, what changes are within our grasp that are not like so hard to implement that can make us feel better? Yeah. So by the way, it's like, I, if you're good in your sweatpants, like don't change out of it. You know, if that's what makes you feel comfortable and good right now, leave the sweatpants as your base and kind of go for it a little more in the other elements of your wardrobe. So when you're doing all these Zoom talks, and I'm sure a lot of moms are doing school conferences or they will be soon, it's really about focusing on the upper portions of our bodies and how we can make a statement from the waist up. So I think an easy way to do that is to throw on a statement pair of earrings, like a hoop, a chain necklace, something that just adds a little bit of glamour and boldness without trying too hard, and it doesn't take that much effort. I think layering is also something that is really easy to do. So you have like a t-shirt, then you could throw on a little blazer. I think blazers are a little stiff when we're at home. Like it's a little hard for me to even do that. But a really crisp cardigan always works really well. And I think going for some color or even a pattern, just a way so when people are looking at you that, you know, it kind of brighten things up a bit. I think that's also really easy. But I think it's totally fine to stick with your comfortable silhouettes. It's just about going for them in a little bit more of a fashion forward way. Mind you, I know this will be on YouTube and on the podcast. So for the people who are not watching this on YouTube to see our outfits right now, <laughs> Sydney is wearing this little white t-shirt, very cute with a gold. Oh, there's a little heart on it. Oh, but her gorgeous long looks like it must be fake because it's so gorgeous. Hair is covering it with a chain gold necklace and giant hoops, really thick earrings and like full on makeup and like whatever. And I am wearing a black t-shirt under a black long sleeve t-shirt with like my kid's school lanyard around my neck um, and my hair in a ponytail. So, and this actually, and I actually put makeup on. So this is better than it could have been. And I'm not in my pajamas, which is also great. And I'm not even in sweatpants today. I'm in like new leggings. <laughs> different. It's a I'm single. I don't have a family. I don't have the responsibility other than myself. And I think, like I said before, it depends on where you are in life that your priorities shift. You know what I mean? When I could, I don't know what I'm going to be like, but this is me like right now in my twenties who doesn't have anyone to worry about but me. And that's the truth. Like it's different for you and for a lot of moms. Well, thank you for letting me off the hook in that gentle way. <laughs> Um, but what about your sourcing of inexpensive, really cute, make a big pop, like items that you seem to find for all the people on TV? Yeah, I just, for me, I do better in Zara's and Forever 21's than I would ever do in a luxurious, like, label brand, like a Gucci or Bonsiaga. I don't really feel comfortable with those brands. Like, it's fun to have a splurge handbag or a shoe. But in terms of clothing, like, I don't think that's where women should be spending, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. I just personally don't see the value. You can find great quality clothing in stores like Zara. One of my favorite websites is called The Verge Curl. And it's kind of like the new nasty gal. Wait, I'm writing it down. Say it again. The, the Verge Girl. 
And some of it looks, I'm just warning you, a little juvenile, like when you go to the homepage, but the quality is so strong. You need to just like sift through it and find those pieces, like they're oversized sweaters. It's such good quality. Everything is around $100 and it works. I don't believe in spending a lot of money also on trends, but you know, a hundred dollars is a lot for like a sweater. Like that's, that's not, not <laughs> keep, keep taking me lower and lower. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, you can go lower too, but in terms of like a high quality sort of like cashmere feeling sweater between oh, okay. $80 and $100 gotcha. and compared to going to like, you know, Bloomingdale's, they're never going to be under a hundred ever. But Forever 21, sites like that, you can find pieces under $50 that are amazing. I never put anything over $50 on my segments, ever. It's always under $50. Um, and, you know, places like Old Navy. I love the jeans and jeggings from Area of American Eagle. I think they're so flattering. They fit yes, on all women. my daughter just told me about American Eagle. And we got her some clothes. And they're amazing. And I was like, I think I have to order from here. Yeah. I was unex yeah. unexpectedly wowed by American Eagle. No, I did I like an ad. It's not an ad. This actually happened. So <laughs> no, none of these are ads. They're just opinions. But Lulu's is another great site. Tons of pieces under $50 that are Lulu's. so fun. Okay. Lulu's. Lulu's I, is a top. To be honest, I do not like to spend money on clothes at all. Um, and don't very often. Um, I like to spend money on books, like, <laughs> um, yes. but, uh, yeah, but I do also feel like it's important to look put together. And, you know, I always hear my mother's voice in my head, like, come on, you know, pull yourself together, like wear a cute outfit. Da, 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 da. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, but it really it's not about spending money. And that's what I try to explain to people. Like style doesn't equal a price tag. It's just a mindset. And the first place that I always suggest shopping first is your own closet. And people always say to me on Instagram, like, you have so many clothes. Yes, brands send me clothes every single week, and I'm very, very lucky. But half the time, I'm rewearing the same pieces each week, and you can't even tell because I'm just styling it in a way that tricks everyone from not realizing it. And they think it's a new outfit, but it's not. So I think it's just developing that craft and, like, knowing what looks good on you and what you like, and then just mixing and matching. And that way you don't feel like you have to go shopping. Like, I never really feel like I have to go shopping. What do I really want to at this point? That's not what's as important to me right now. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen to all the designers and everybody if nobody ever goes to events anymore? Like, what if events, do you know what I mean? I was like, I opened my closet. I have a few like really fancy dresses and I was like, oh, I wonder if I'll ever wear these again. And then I was thinking, what about all the people who make all these fancy dresses? What is their, their whole business model? They, they must've been doing great. And, you know, obviously, I mean, I sound like a moron, but you know, obviously I know that the economy has been hit in basically every possible sector, but I just happen to be thinking about high-end, um, you know, formal wear companies and what's going on with them. It's so true. You know, I've been in the Hamptons since March. I've gone back to the city like twice. And when I went back most recently, I had my rack of clothing, which is where I would usually keep the clothes I would wear in like that week. And I was going to tons of events and I just had to stay organized. That rack is uh, full of the clothes that I'm supposed to wear the week that the city shut down. And I saw this like gorgeous periwinkle sequin blue Again, I was supposed to go to the Frick Museum for their young adults party that I was on the committee of. I'm like, am I ever wearing that again? Um, so yeah, a lot of designers have had to shift their focus. Jonathan Simkai is now doing like total ready to wear, very cool, just like leggings and t-shirts, the most casual I've ever seen him. Michael Costello, when the pandemic first hit, he stopped making his gowns and just transitioned to making masks with his million mask initiative um, to give masks to frontline workers in LA and then other cities. And he was one of my first guests on my lunchtime with Sydney show. And he actually brought us into the factory where we could see these masks being made, which is super cool. Um, Christian Siriano, like he's definitely doing a little bit more of like licensing deals I can see with different companies. Um, I think they're all trying to just figure it out. I really hope that we will be able to go to events. I think it's just gonna take time. And especially for my generation of millennials, they don't like that notion of waiting. I read like crazy these articles, like Time Magazine just did an article comparing the pandemic to uh, the Spanish flu. And it like literally did a side by side. And it, to me, it, it says like, you know, another year is gonna be washed. And when things do hopefully normalize in some capacity, we're all going to have to have a really big coming out party and everyone's going to have to just be decked out in like their best outfits ever sure. and make up for the last two years. Yeah. <laughs> Ex 
exactly. Um, so what's coming next for you? Do you have any idea? Like where are things going? You're doing your own show. Basically you're, you have this amazing book that just came out. Now what, what's like you're in the, in the next year, what, what's your planning? I think planning is the one thing as such a controlling person that I can't really do right now. And I think a lot of women and men are struggling with that where we're not really in control um, of our futures. So I've kind of take like a step back and realize that I can't plan. My goal before the pandemic was to work for a specific network, which I thought I was moving to LA and this was all happening. And then I was like, that can't even be my goal now because it's not the focus of viewers. Media and fashion, they're both changing so much right now that it has to be a very fluid situation. But the one thing I can control is myself. And this Lunchtime with Sydney show is something I fully have control of. I do everything. I host, I book, I produce. And I'm loving that hands-on-ness that you know, I'm able to sort of have right now because it makes me fulfilled. So I am doing, uh, continuing to build that out. I host Instagram lives on Fridays for the Today Show's new millennial platform called Tomorrow by Today, which is a very similar concept to what I started on Lunchtime with Sydney. And continuing to focus on the book and just doing fun events and trying to do virtual things with my followers because I really want people to take COVID seriously and to stay home as much as they can and not and wear their masks and my generation is just so out of touch in a lot of ways with how to deal with this. And I'm just trying to set a good example. And I think it's, it's easier said than done, but I'm just, I'm really trying. So um, yeah. And hopefully more products. I launched an Aim High hoodie um, with my book and it was a collaboration with Athleisure brand, Fat Buddha, and it sold out within like 24 hours. And I want to continue to release product to just make people feel good. And that's accessible to everyone. That's a great idea. Awesome. Um, do you have any advice to aspiring authors having just written a book? Wow. I mean, uh, listen, I've never given birth, but I feel like it must sort of be like the equivalence mentally of giving birth to a baby because you're putting something out into the world, you know, but um, like, you know, I went to school for journalism. So I wrote, I've written my whole life. So for me, that, that wasn't really hard, but I think it's just about coming up with an idea and how it can be different. We're in such a world where there are so many people who are so good um, at the same kind of skills, but it's about our perspectives that make us different. So it's about finding that niche and what makes your voice a little different from the rest. So I think it's just figuring that out, writing a lot of lists, but you would give way better advice than I would. Like I, I'm sure you have like a great method for me. It's you know what? I, I don't think anybody, I think everybody I ask has something a little bit different to say. I mean, it's not, it's just so neat and it reflects their personality and I just like hearing and make lots of lists. I don't think anyone has said that before. So there you go. Post-it notes everywhere. I tried to clean up for you today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, well, Sydney, thank you so much. Thanks for coming on Moms in No Time to Read Books. Congratulations on your book. And um, I can't wait to see where you end up going in life. You're, I'm like, you're like a little shooting star. So we'll see what happens. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. Okay. Have a great day.